that China can finally say, you know what, guys, hmm. no one's going to believe your BS anymore. But yeah, when we're talking about the, yes. you know, about the U.S. and the real yep. freedom, uh -huh. I mean, the U.S. just pay like what? 1.6 billion dollars. Okay. Let me rewind. Yo, that they, makes me. And we're gonna talk. We're talking about the 1.6 billion up from half a billion a few years back. No. This has been increased. So every non-government organization yeah. is going to be very happy. Christmas is coming early for them. Yeah. Because they're getting a bunch of money to go into their coffers, like Voice of America, you know, Radio International, all these companies that yeah. put up propaganda against China to the tune of 1.6 billion, but this was passed in the US government. Yeah. Yeah, so okay. if you've ever watched, I'm sure you have, yeah. all you gotta do is click on, and this money is spent worldwide, by the way, okay? Click on 60 Minutes in Australia. Yeah. Every third video is an absolutely sensationalized hit piece against China. You gotta ask yourself, yeah. where's the funding coming for this? Right? 1.6 billion. 1.6 billion, yeah, it's been so anti China. Passed. Yeah, anti China, yeah. It is, it is crazy. Like, also now with the school shootings, like I've been watching some videos on Instagram, there was this one guy who was really angry. Oh, thank you. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> it's still sitting in my throat, by the way. But yeah, he was saying, like, when is America going to stop? Like, they don't have money anymore for healthcare, yep. for schools to take care of their kids. They don't have money for housing, for anything anymore. And when are the politicians going <laughs> to realize that it's the American people who run the country? Because it has just become a political nightmare in the US. Yes, indeed. And I feel like when you want to talk about, especially safety, like, you guys asked me so many times, oh Lizzie, but you know, you need to show us. I am here on the streets all the time showing you the actual life in China, how safe it truly is for a woman alone to be going around at night and now we're just taking a walk here. Look at all these people and it's this late at night and everyone just look at this kid, by the way, <laughs> just having an amazing time loving each other, families going out, enjoying their time. And like Alex said, like, what are they going to complain about? Because it's good, actually, because the more people, especially Chinese, the more they travel to other countries, yeah. I have the confidence to know yeah. that the more they will love yeah, China. I think I think you're right. And that that's starting to happen. Yes. Um, look at this threatening police car in front of us, huh? Oh, so scary. Wow, don't come. <laughs> it's so cute. One, one sec. Oh. Messy. Oh, melting. <laughs> Jeez. The yeah. ice cream melts so fast here. You gotta remember, it's still 32 outside. Oh, look at all these people standing in the lines. Like again and again, I'm going to prove to you guys like this is the real danger in yeah, this China. Is a, this is a slow part. And this is a city that also, uh, they it's nicknamed the furnace because it gets hot here, very yeah. hot. Chongqing is very important. I'm not sure if you know um, why it belongs, um, pretty much it's governed by the central government here in China. Yeah. and. It's an important structure. It's basically, I don't know if you heard of the Belt and Road, the BRI? Yes, yeah. So it's nicknamed Zero Kilometer. It's where this is where the start of the BRI basically oh. happens. Wow, okay. And it spreads out through what is called the International Land Sea Trade Corridor. And of course, we have a train that, yeah. you want me to hold that while you're, we have a train that leaves Chongqing. Yeah and goes all the way to Germany, takes about 40 days. What? And it's a major supply route for, let's say, laptops. You know, a lot of these items that need batteries. Yeah. Can't really put them on planes. So they put them on trains. 
Yeah. And they changed so many conductors along the along the rail line. But this is really the heartbeat of China. This is the motor city of China too. Yes. Chongqing. One in three cars in China are produced right here in this city. This is a new energy vehicle city. And you know what? You know what bothers me? I would. I used to. Actually, it doesn't bother me. I kind of find it comical. Yes. There is certain YouTubers that say that you cannot see the sky. Oh yeah. Or it's so gray, it's polluted. I live. Well, you you know where we my I'm positioned here in yeah. Chongqing. I have a direct line shot right to uh, the skyline here in uh, Chongqing. And the blue skies that you see out my window every day. Now, yeah. 15 years ago, yes, things were different, but things changed. And I don't know if you notice, but you'll see most cars have green license plates. Yeah, those are new energy vehicles. Wow. So almost 50 to 60 percent of the cars on the road here now have changed, and they're not they're not falling into this mm. Greta Thunberg being told that you know. <laughs> The ice caps are melting in the, the world Arctic. is ending. Yeah, that's not the intention here. Yeah. It's with technology. And you know, when I got into my first new energy vehicle, I didn't realize it. I, I'm sitting there, I said, wow, this car's got an amazing display. And my friend said, it's an NEV. I said, wow, but look at the monitor. No, no it's not. This, it's, got, it's got to have a muffler. It's got yeah. to have tailpipes. I got out of the car, I said, what is going on here? It just looks like a normal car. And I met the... Uh, Do you like durian? Uh, not really, no. Me neither. This is uh, Durian, for those of you who don't know. You know, let me tell you a funny story. The first okay, time I came to China, <laughs> sorry, I, it was my first night in China. I was hungry. I didn't know the food, so I ordered the biggest margarita pizza. Oh, no. And I'm so excited for this pizza, and I'm opening it, and the smell hits me. So I'm like, okay, maybe <laughs> cheese smells different in China. I mean, I don't know anything about China. And I take that first bite. It was not a margarita pizza, it was durian. <laughs> oh my. And since that time, I have never eaten or tried durian again. But yeah, like you were talking about the EVs, I know like we're not talking about the safety necessarily, but what I'm or we are trying to get over to the viewers is what is happening in the country is really a mirror to how things are going when you will come here. Yeah. Like China, the government, they spend a lot of money on giving things to the people, right? Sure. The people come first here, and that is why EV cars, why? Because of the pollution. Look how, like Chongqing looked 20, 30 years ago, and look how... Well, it's not just the pollution. Yeah. It's actually a strategy. If you think about it, you're in the West. Yes. The average person in the West will go to university, come out of university with yeah. a student loan debt, be hit with a 20 to 30, or maybe 35 year mortgage. On top of that, they're going to be told or convinced by yes. propaganda on their own TV channels. Yeah. You must get this car now. You must buy this car. Yeah. And it'll be the 2024. They'll pay 50, 60, 70 thousand dollars. The moment they drive it off the lot, yeah. it depreciates. Next year, they'll be pressured. Your neighbor has a new car, but you don't. Yeah. So you need to buy or upgrade. And you get caught in this vicious cycle. I have three sisters. One of them uh, is a school teacher. Yes. And uh, she's gone through 10 to 15 automobiles in her lifespan oh right? wow yeah and the depreciation value in that is at least a small fortune quarter yes. of a million dollars yeah. so these cars here are yes built for the environment also they're built for a new generation of buyers new yeah. generation of buyers used to we'll call it used to drive the mechanical cars yeah. with the engines now yeah. they now they want fireplaces lounging chairs heated chairs yeah. great sound systems and for a fraction of the price if you don't think these cars are coming to a country near you, that's fine. If yeah. you want to miss out on it, that's fine. But the 152 countries that are part of the China's Belt and Road Initiative, just look at Russia right now. They've replaced their entire yeah. car market. And the Western car makers used to love China. Yeah. Okay, unfortunately uh, for them, some of them have stepped out of the EV market, but then again, some of them have actually join the new energy vehicle market yeah. in collaboration. So China's open to doing business with other people. But that is where the overcapacity comes in as yeah. well, right? Like everyone is so complaining about China, overcapacity, manufacturing goods, and it's just unfair. But like today I went with the intern and he told me like how, it's because like China works so hard and other countries don't work that hard. By the way, let's, we got some dancers, some handsome dancers. 
Anyone wants their number, let me know. Woo. Oh, dancing is allowed in China. Wow, can you believe, these are the people that are oppressed. These are the people that are not happy at all. Look. You can see all their followers wow. on the screen. Oh, wow, these are all her followers? Yeah. That is insane. Very comfortable. <laughs> I mean, yeah, again, this people think, oh, Chinese people are not happy, right? Really, they think that outside. They feel like they just go to work, they work all the time, and then after they just sad because they have to work so hard and they're being forced to get in, get married. They're forced to this, and the government is watching them. And then I'm like, are you watching the videos that we're making? Do these people look sad to you? But yeah, talking about the overcapacity, yeah. like I really believe it's just because the Chinese work hard. And other countries are saying it's unfair because they are not willing to work as hard. You know, so what do you think is the if that's route? the case, then the 19,000 American companies that are registered in Hong Kong <laughs> yeah. could probably go home tomorrow morning then. Tim Cook, you know, the CEO of Apple, yes. said it correctly. We just don't have the tooling, the infrastructure that China has invested in in the last three decades in these markets. Yeah. But that's okay. The American consumer is benefiting on this. You can't imagine that. Okay, I'll give you the best example I can give you for where people might say, oh, but the product's quality in China is not very good. Yes. Well, we're currently filming on a DJI camera right yeah. now. Yeah. Very good quality. DJI drones is a quality name. Yeah. Huawei has exceptional mobile phones. Yes. We have all these types of brands that are everywhere around the world. Okay. Xiaomi is another brand that is popular. Tencent is another a brand that is popular. Yeah. For all those TikTokers out there, well, their parent company, Douyin, is also, uh, you know, another technology that yeah. many thousands of Americans are making money on these platforms. So I think we should probably go right up this way then. Oh, okay. So, you know, this overcapacity, this China's dumping this product on the market, this. Listen, most of the people that buying product and they see that maybe the quality is not good, that is coming from the supply chain that buys it from the manufacturers here in China. And they will go to the trade shows like in Guangzhou yes. and Shenzhen and yeah. Beijing. And the, somebody from Walmart will go in there and say, okay, I want 50,000 teacups, but I don't yeah. want them at 50 cents. I want them at 20 cents. Now, the Chinese are not going to turn that order away, but they're going to say quality is going to be an issue here. Yeah. But the buyer says, well, if it looks like a teacup, uh, you can fill it up like a teacup and think yeah. it's a teacup, right? <laughs> yeah. And so on and so forth. But then somebody might take it home and it breaks and they'll say, They'll flip it upside down, they'll say made in China. Yep. But made in China under the direction of the sales team and the yeah. management team of, for example, Walmart. And that's how we get to these cheap products. China has blown past that cheap market uh, uh, type of mentality yeah. years ago. But also not just the Chinese, the whole world, because I feel like when I was younger, yeah. made in China, it represented cheap. Right. Right, the quality is not Correct. good. Like if you got someone a made in China gift, they'll think, oh, how cheap is this person? You know, it's going to break within a week or two. To now that even the Chinese people, they are buying more local goods. Of course, yeah. Than they are international goods because made in China is not the same that it was before. Now it represents quality and affordability. Yeah, and I think also, you know, there is still a lot of America outside of America here. Uh, you can see a lot of these shops that we went to in the city center there. A lot of them are Italian shops. A lot of them are in North America selling. Nike's still selling strong yes. here. You know, German brands, Adidas, all these brands continue to sell here and benefit from the Chinese consumer. Mm -hmm. At one point, Apple had a major uh, market here in China, but we've seen the resurgence of Huawei come back. Yes. And there's other things that are fueling this. We have to think about this country just came out of this pandemic just over a year ago. And it learned a lot during that three, two or three years of, you know, really being isolated. Yeah. But it made a lot of people, Chinese, realize, wait a moment, we have a pretty, pretty interesting country here compared to, to the rest of the world. Yes. Uh, maybe let's stick around. Yeah. And you're seeing a lot of that come back. A lot of people that are Chinese that are not being welcomed. 
or visas being canceled yeah. or you know it used to be some Chinese they would go they would get an American uh, American education at double the price yeah okay the universities were charged double the price and uh, they would either stay in America and work for a few years get some experience either come back work in the financial centers yes. like Shang Shanghai or whatever but now immediately their visas are getting canceled and they're just saying we'll take your school money but bye-bye after that so that is another uh, angle where yeah. we're seeing a real change and you throw 1.6 billion on top of that and you make a nation feel absolutely hated yes. by the world is uh, I admire these people for their restraint exactly because like no matter how much they trying I mean look at all these youtubers that are coming to China yeah and because of the 144 hour transit visa and they come in to actually see for themselves and then what happens they are shocked it's always a great video because they cannot believe what they are seeing that all the lies they've been told are lies and they are enjoying their time and that's why those videos get so many views because it's shocking for yeah. the whole world to see and it's good because it has a snowball effect their followers will see it then their followers maybe come to China yeah. and then they see for themselves yeah. and then you know it just snowballs and this 1.6 million is actually just thrown into the bin and, and it's China, just... China's really uh, okay don't underestimate these guys 30 years ago they didn't know it really how to make a mobile phone well they got that market now <laughs> yeah. maybe 10 years ago they weren't that active in the uh, car making well they're in there now uh, platforms <laughs> they're in there now yeah. with Billy Billy tents and doy and uh, two chow all these other yes. um, online social media social media is huge here I think it's actually bigger here uh, than, it than it is in North America yeah. okay it's really a part of people's lives but it's not just that China continues to move forward yes. now I'm in the media okay I work uh, for a media company here I was one of the first uh, I would say foreigners yes. to be allowed on um, we'll call it satellite television here and I have a show called let's meet and we've done I think 40 shows already and this was new like you know our media company said hey this is brand new we're, we're trying this out yeah so the government is open to trying new things and they're opening up their media and here is what I think is the icing on the cake for this okay China may not know how to defend itself yet yes. internationally mm -hmm. but the more that people like me who I'm working for media more yeah. people like you who are an outstanding content creator great channel by the way thank you go subscribe to all of the channels he just <laughs> mentioned and mine go support but the more that you get your honest word out yes the more that China can finally say you know what guys hmm. no one's gonna believe your BS anymore yeah this is China accept it we are emerging we are a developing country yeah and we will be able to stand on our feet and defend ourselves yeah which is what is amazing and like all the youtubers like what we're trying to accomplish is really to show you guys the you know truth about China that is why we're doing what we're doing because we know so many of you don't even think about coming to China when you think about traveling because it's just you know connected to scary things you know you don't want to come here and for us to just even give you that small kind of hope that oh maybe China isn't as bad as I thought it isn't as bad as what the news is telling me then I feel like we have accomplished yeah. what we really wanted to so yeah that was it we have walked around the streets of Chongqing it was an amazing time and I hope you guys enjoyed it please let us know in the comments how do you feel about this walk in China and keep on emailing me I love it I love to answer you guys and make videos for you guys and also big thanks to Alex here please go and follow Reportify Media and yeah subscribe to my channel as well and I thank you guys so much for enjoying this walk with us I hope you had a great time from us here in the beautiful Chongqing have a great night, have a great day wherever you are, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye, Bye everyone.